Hey everyone, it is me, Chase McMaster. You may have heard about me. <sighs> you probably have it. So, this is my first podcast. I'm going to keep it 15 minutes, maybe a little longer. But I'm just trying to, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know why I need to, I don't know why I get to have your ears. But maybe I can earn them. But I feel like there's a lot of stuff to talk about, and we should talk about it. And maybe I can offer some unique perspective with my 13 years, 13 years of business experience, and half of those were failing. But this isn't a business podcast. Uh, the podcast, I believe, should be about laughing. I like to make people laugh. Am I funny? Mm. Uh, I try to be, and I get people that laugh at me, or with me, I hope, but I also get a lot of people when I post stories that I think are funny, and they say that I'm, they like to tell me that I'm not funny, and I'm not sure why, probably because they don't think I'm funny, but thank you for your input. I will keep it into consideration as I continue to not be funny. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll try to fix it. Maybe I'll try to cater to you. Maybe you're not funny. Have you thought about that? Have you ever thought that you're dumb and that you're not funny? Just a thought. Maybe you're mad because you don't get it. I think that's what it is. My funny friends think I'm funny or they're nice. I pay them a lot of money to hang out with me. So I posted on my Instagram story and I said, what should I talk about? And I didn't get many submissions because I think people think that I'm joking about this. And that's okay. Uh, I think it's weird when you know somebody and they start trying to be somebody else. They, they try to reinvent themselves. Uh, a lot of people know me as the guy that builds cars, the guy that owns Chase Bays. Um, but I'm kind of trying to, I'm 31 and I'm trying to reinvent myself a little bit. I want to get more into writing and uh, not like writing books, but writing sketches and shows uh, I've always, I've done a few videos for Chase Bays and I feel like I've got a good direction on things. I've, or I've gotten some videography skills and I feel like I can act. And so I'm trying to kind of push my way into that world as just a hobby. And if I fail, that's okay. But it's weird when you know somebody and you see them trying to reinvent themselves because it's easy for you, who's probably stagnant in your life, it's easy for people to hate on other people. And it's easy to be like, oh my God, did you see, like, they're posing on Instagram again. They think they're an influencer. They only have like a thousand followers. But I don't think you should do that. I think the people that hate on other people for trying are fuck-ups. And they need, and, and it's never going to go away. Even if they hear this, they're going to be like, look at him, he's trying again. <laughs> and it's, it's interesting because when you, start, when you start trying to reinvent yourself or be something new, you have to fail and you have to look stupid. And you start with zero and you do that for so long. Um, I mean, if you look at, if you go on IMDb for any actor and you look at them, they're, it's just like Bradley Cooper was just 10 years and nothing. And then he got one good gig and then it was just all up from there. But you get, people will write about you and they'll hate on you and all your local friends from your hometown will trash you. But it's easy to live in that place where you don't take risks or you don't try things because you're scared of that. And I live in that a lot. Um, I started Chase Bays when I was 17 uh, and I failed for practically six or seven years before it became anything. And I had to publicly, publicly fail. I was publicly slandered. And um, people went to the craziest extent to, to try to stop what I was doing. And I don't know. I was young and fearless, and it was a lot easier then. But as you get older, you become more self-aware, and it makes you not want to try things because you're scared of, you know, failing. But I'm just going to go for it. This is step one in the right direction. And it's hard to imagine failing again or publicly being ridiculed again. But there's, if, you, if you just look at all the people that have done it, 
If you, everybody that's put themselves out there has just failed and failed and failed. I could sit here and name off all the stories. But I'm not going to. So I posted on my Instagram and I said, what the fuck should I talk about? Because I don't know. Um, uh, one just says stop. I'm not going to stop. Until I'm dead. But I think that by that time, that, I'm, that I'm, I'm 31, so maybe in 30, 40 years, I think we'll have a way to, to keep living. If you watch Black Mirror, they have the thing where you can upload your consciousness. I think we might even be able to stay in our bodies. Depending on what you religiously believe, what if we could just block that? What if we could do DMT and make deals with these celestial beings, and then they'll be like, you know what? You guys are all right. You guys have gotten pretty woke from doing our drugs and coming up to see this endless kaleidoscope eyes. And, and we're going to allow you to keep living. All the good ones, at least. Am I a good one? I don't know. My last name's not a good one. It's McMaster. But I'm not going to stop. Even if I tell myself, shut up. Uh, all right. Serial killer justification hour. That's from my friend Haley. Congrats on the new baby. Uh, that's an easy one. I feel like we're all, we're all serial killers. I think we all, were, we all have that serial killer thing in our brain. It's just enough things to happen when you're young. If you look at every serial killer, there was always something that happened when they were young. I felt like when I was in my young 20s and I was failing and, and it felt out of control, I felt like I was going to become a serial killer. I bet it feels good to kill somebody. Not, in, not if you make it out without something fucked up happening to you. But I, I bet if you have that, if, some, if the right, basically if the recipe for madness happens, I bet it feels good to kill somebody. I mean, look at Ted Bundy's story. He, he was kind of planned out at first. And once he got that taste of blood, you know, he just couldn't, he couldn't help himself. And once he got to Florida, he was just killing and killing and killing. I bet that felt great for him. I'm not condoning serial killers. But we are romanticizing them a little bit. Um, if you look at Netflix, I'm pretty sure, I don't know how Netflix works, but I'm pretty sure somebody high up there has a thing for serial killers. Especially the hot ones. I mean, Ted Bundy. I'm not gay, but... I might hook up with them a little bit. I don't know. But I think that you can, you know, every time you tell the story, there's always, there's always some crazy shit happening when they were young. Um, and a lot of them seem to be angry at their moms. We talk about daddy issues a lot. You know, if you have daddy issues, it's going to output into some weird shit. You know, you become a stripper or you become a stripper. That's pretty much it. If you have daddy issues, you become a stripper. Or you don't even make money doing it. You're just a hoe. You just hoe around. You go to the club and you latch onto the dudes popping bottles. You know, pop, popping Grey Goose up at the club. You latch onto those dudes. And yeah, you get some free alcohol or whatever. But you're not really, you're not really walking home with any money in your pocket. You just got a hangover and an STD. So daddy issues are tough. I might have some daddy issues myself. Um, I don't know what that means for me. I was never a stripper. I went to a strip club once, though. I went to a strip club, and I've actually, I'm from Birmingham, Alabama, but I've never been to a strip club in Birmingham, and, and I'm going to keep it that way. But I've been to strip clubs in Phoenix, Los Ange Phoenix, Arizona, Los Angeles, and Las Vegas. Um, I was in one in Las Vegas, and I ended up getting in this real good conversation with this stripper. It was a stripper with a heart. I don't think she had daddy issues. I think she just, I think she just needed money, and it was the easiest money. And she looked good, so I understand it. But maybe her morals, maybe she had some mommy issues. Maybe she had some mommy issues, and that you know, messed with her morals a little bit, but not too much to become a stripper. I think her mommy issues just made her a hustler, and she knew how to use her body. 
So I had a good conversation with her. Very intelligent. She was in LVU or whatever, Las Vegas University, whatever their college is, the big one. I had a great conversation with her until about 5 a.m. And then I, I walked her home and I had sex with her. And I didn't pay her because she's not a prostitute. She's a stripper. There's a big difference, okay? Y'all need to have some respect for strippers out there. I'm sick of seeing this objectifying of strippers. They're people too. You should be ashamed of yourselves. What are we talking about? Um, oh, yeah, serial killers. So I think that serial killers, I think they're mommy issues. I think that daddy issues, you turn into a stripper or whatever. <coughs> but I think that mommy issues are what create serial killers. So for all the moms out there, if you're listening, don't fuck up because then you'll have a serial killer son. But, you know, I guess if you have to pick one to fuck up, make it the dad. If you're going to have a fuck up, pick the dad because then you're just a stripper. You're just making money. But if you're a mom, if you have a mommy issue, you're going to kill people. But maybe that's just dudes. If, if there's a female with mommy issues, she's not a serial killer. No, they have, serial, they have female serial killers now. Casey Anthony, Rosie O'Donnell. Um, who else? I wish I had somebody here who could Google stuff, but I don't. It's just me. And I'm not going to pull out my phone. That's rude. This is like, kind of like a date right now. We're on a date. This is what it's like to go on a date with me. I just talk the whole time. And I don't ask about the girl. And I just say, this was nice. And I walk off. And I don't pay the tab. I make her pay the tab because they wanted equality and I'm going to give it to them. And that's respectful. I'm just kidding. I always pay the tab. It sucks. Even when I didn't have any money and I don't have any money now, but even when I had less money, I paid the tab. I felt like there's a pressure to it. It's probably because I'm from the South, from Birmingham. I wonder if I was from New York. I live in New York right now, New York City. I wonder if I was from here, if it would be equal. I feel like things are a lot more equal here. I feel like a lot of girls from Birmingham post a lot about feminism and all that kind of shit. And, uh, and it's a good thing. But they want to control their view of feminism. They want it to be this or that. They don't support the stripper girls. Those girls are feminists too. You got to support what they're doing. It's their bodies to do whatever they want with. So if, just because it's not your view of feminism doesn't mean you shouldn't support them. But all these girls want equality and they want to show the tits. They want to free the nips. And that's cool. I support them. But when it comes to pay the tab, they look at me. How much am I worth to you? Well, once we salvage you for parts, um, probably a lot. Do you think they still sell body parts? I was on the dark web a few weeks ago and they, I saw a skeleton for sale and it looked real. But do you think that they sell parts? Like what would be the value of, of an arm? I don't know. Don't take anything I'm saying to heart. I'm just, I'm just riffing. I'm usually sarcastic. Um, but I will say that if I was a serial killer, I'd be a good one. But luckily I don't have any mommy issues, so that's not happening. That's not in the books for me. Um, I only got a couple minutes, so I'm going to go on to the next one. Did we, do we, I feel like we rounded that out a little bit. Serial killer justification. I feel like we justified them. I mean, what are you going to do? You, we're all born the same-ish, and your mom sucked, and you got a lot of anger, so you want to kill people. I mean, that makes sense. Your mom wasn't there for you. You need the, you need the love and care of a mom. That's what you need. You don't really need a dad. You don't really need a dad. 
you got a granddad. You got a, you know, a guy down the street who, uh, who will teach you how to fight. Or he'll just kick your ass if you're me. That's what happened to me. I didn't really, I didn't really get much there. But I turned out okay. I'm not a serial killer, and I'm not a stripper. Not that there's anything wrong with being a stripper. How many times do you have to fucking say that? What's y'all's fucking problems with strippers? Jesus Christ. I'm sick of this. I'm sick of it. That's it. That's all I got. I hope this was interesting. And I hope that a lot of people will make fun of me for this. I feel like this would be better if I had somebody with me. If we could just talk about life, you know? How much we care about each other. How much we love each other. Even though we just met the day before. Sometimes a bond can happen fast, you know? You ever meet somebody? And not, I'm, not, I'm talking platonic. You ever meet somebody and you're like, this person's going to be a friend for a long time. And they are. It's hard to find good friends. Have you ever seen these girls who have like 17 best friends? They post a picture and they're like, me and the girls. What the fuck? What do you do? Like when you're at a table, how do you have a single conversation with 17 people? You could start a village with that. And you know what? Maybe that's what they're doing. Maybe it's their DNA planning ahead for when the, you know, the wave comes down and crashing against Manhattan. Maybe that's what that is. That's all I got for you guys. I'm going to do this again. This was fun. I hope that you had fun. I bet that one person is listening right now. But let's change that. Let's turn that into two people and three and four and five. All right, that's it. I'm out. Do you really want to live like this forever? She's trying to love you, boy.